Yo, big spoilers, this show is fantastic and I definitely recommend you see it before watching this video. I swear, Robert Kirkman's entire career plan was to create beloved comic characters and then have Steven Yeun portray them being brutalized by someone with a mustache. A and you know what? He made it work, good for him. Invincible is a new animated series that is, to put it lightly, everything I've been hoping for out of a comic book adaptation my entire life. It's exactly what I've wanted in comic book stories being brought to new mediums, and I think it's fair to say this is a perfect adaptation of the beloved comic. While I'll personally never forgive him for traumatizing me at age 7 with Marvel Zombies, Robert Kirkman is undoubtedly one of the most experimental and brave storytellers in comics because he's not afraid to do something different and unique and shockingly violent. Nothing exemplifies that more than his and co-creator Cory Walker's 2003 superhero comic, Invincible. Basically, Invincible is a superhero world where the rules of Marvel and DC don't apply. If a character is killed off, they stay dead. If a villain wins, that just stays. If something dark and depressing happens, the book unashamedly takes the time to really weigh the consequences and fallout of that in a mature and realistic way. But in spite of this, the book isn't so much of a critique of superheroes as it is a loving celebration of them. The book has its extreme low points for its characters, but it allows them to have high points and successes too. In spite of it all, it's never cynical. And I find that more realistic than a book where everything is bad and depressing and everyone is miserable the entire time with no reprieves of happiness and everyone is an unlikable asshole. Life has downs and ups. It really do be like that. It stars Mark Grayson, aka Invincible, as the young superhero son of the world's most powerful hero, Omni-Man. The series follows Mark's day-to-day -day adventures dealing with a social life, the inner politics of the superhero community, and the crushing weight of a potential life-ending alien invasion from a race that's even stronger than he is, who are actually the source of his and his father's powers. Some of the bigger themes are immortality and what life would be like for someone who can live to be 5,000 years old, or how easy it might be to become disconnected from one's humanity if someone became too smart or too strong with superheroes routinely losing their ability to have normal lives as their powers grow. And while the comic came to its conclusion in 2018, it's found a second life as an animated series on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, like the eighth best way to watch TV. What can I say, except this show represents everything there is to love about the comic, but fixes some of its most glaring flaws. The storylines in Invincible are compelling, heartfelt, engrossing, and unpredictable. It's truly one of those comics that once it gets going, it's hard to put down. But I found myself struggling with its slow and scattered pacing a few times when I read it. Often there'd be a character or storyline introduced at one point, and then not followed up on for scores of issues. This proves that Kirkman was really thinking ahead and had the entire thing planned out from the beginning, which is a great thing. But sometimes the foreshadowing became a little frustrating when I knew it wouldn't amount to anything for 50 more issues because so many other events were put ahead of it. This leads to a feeling of stopping and starting with some stories, where you're fascinated to know more about this villain, or their plan, or this backstory, or this character's little side thing, and, and then the book seemingly forgets that exists for ages. This show manages to dodge this by taking full advantage of its longer running time. With nearly hour-long episodes, there's a lot more time for Amazon's Invincible to reorganize and reinterpret the flow of these events but ultimately not changing a thing about them. For example, in the comic, we find out that this student at Mark's college, D.A. Sinclair, is kidnapping people off the street and turning them into nearly indestructible cyborg minions that he wants to sell to the military. He even kidnaps a friend of Mark's named Rick. Mark's best friend William asks him to go looking for Rick, and at the time, Mark is already wrapped up in an unrelated storyline and is just like, yeah, I'll get around to it and it takes him months to find the time for it. This storyline could have been resolved in like three issues maximum, but is sprinkled throughout the first 38 issues of the book. The show's response was to consolidate all of these events into a single episode, so we get the entire beginning, middle, and end in one sitting without any of the distractions. I find the show version preferable, because it doesn't reflect as badly on our main character. He goes looking for his friend that very same day instead of putting a ton of other things first. Good work, show Mark. Fuck that other guy. And this show does things like that all the time. Like using the plot about one of Mark's superhero friends, Robot, becoming more human with a cloned body. 
Something that took 20 plus issues to handle in the book was split across three or four episodes as a side plot. And they changed the dialogue to hint at a future event from much later in the book. Changed the world. Giving it more of a connective tissue with what comes next for Robot as a character. I've seen some people complain that the big twist about Mark's father being evil came too early in the show, having only been at the end of the first episode while it took six issues for the comic. I don't really have a problem with this, because this show needed to get its hook in early, and having more than one episode of the safe, fun, lighthearted superhero stuff before the violence came in meant the audience would spend like two or three weeks waiting for the shoe to drop, and might give up on the show because of its far more average mask at the beginning. One episode was plenty of time. And you know what? This show gives us fans of the comic an entirely new way to recommend this story to people and then watch their horrified reaction when things take a dramatic, brain explodey turn. Whenever I think about comic adaptations, I always see the discussion about comic book accuracy and whether or not that's a good thing or if it's not important or... or what. Every side of the discussion makes good points. Like, the whole fun of making shows and movies like this is to take something we've only seen in drawings and still images and then put them in motion with a layer of realism that elevates the story to an entirely new level of believability. It's one thing to see a man fly in a drawing, but Donner's Superman once made the world believe a man could fly in the real world. So why wouldn't we want to see all of our favorite moments and characters in live action or animation as accurately as possible? On the other hand, Comics are just as valid of a storytelling medium as movies and TV. A story is not made better or more valid by simply being made into a big budget Hollywood movie. Sure, that's the art medium that the most people would probably see, given, you know, the gap between comics and Marvel movies. But the story was just fine as it was. If you wanted it to be as pinpoint accurate as possible, why not just read the comic itself again? They may as well change at least something so it's not totally redundant, and some translations need to be made from one medium to another. Comics are long-form serialized storytelling with massive casts of characters and thousands of storylines all tangled together at once. In an 8 episode season or a 2 hour movie, you can't really use all of it. So some things need to be altered or simplified to fit a new medium. Invincible fits perfectly in the middle of both sides of this debate. It shows us every important scene from the comic and adapts them nearly shot for shot and word for word in some cases. Don't you think she deserves to know the truth? Yeah, but- Your mother knew he killed the Guardians, but she was holding out hope there was a good reason for it. So was I. Better for her to know everything about your father. Maybe you're right. Wait a minute, where are we? Oh, sorry. Lights! <gasps> That's enough, lights. You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die! Think, Mark! You'll outlast every fragile, insignificant being on this planet. Everyone and everything you know will be gone. What will you have after 500 years? Oh, you, Dad. I still have you. Dad? but also knows how to alter that to fit a new medium by enhancing what works and ignoring what doesn't. The improvements to pacing, the extra time we get to spend with our characters and get to know them better, and all the added context to flesh out the already great world building. Some things that the comic glosses over or spends little time developing get more of a closer look in the series, like the relationship between Rex and Eve, Rex cheating on Eve, their messy breakup, and his final attempt to win her back is all off-panel in the comic. It's only explained through quick exposition and conversation because you have to keep things moving when you're limited to 22 pages of story. The Amazon version shows instead of tells, and it makes everything so much easier to understand for the characters and their mindsets. It strengthens the writing and our connection to the story. And the series is smart enough to know what to cut for relevance. 
There's a very early story in the comic about a teacher at Mark's high school kidnapping students and then turning them into cyborg human bombs. The show skips over this because it already sounded a little too much like the stuff with D.A. Sinclair and the Reanimen. And between the two of them, the Reanimen are far more important as they have a long-reaching implication and use for the entire rest of the series. While this teacher subplot doesn't really go anywhere. So they cut it. And I totally get that. Going forward, I hope the show can cut down on some of the unnecessary time skips from the book. Several times in the series, something will happen to Mark where he's sent to the past, or an alternate universe, or just stuck on an alien world, and during that time away, a major time skip will happen. It'll feel like only a few days or hours for him, and we'll be following that pretty closely, but back on Earth, time is passing rapidly. He'll go back and things will be incredibly different. It's like Interstellar, but like, seven different times. This is a good way to extend the scope of the story without having to dwell too long on certain parts, but it happens so often and at times can be very alienating. You're invested in the way things are now, when suddenly you blink and it's nine months later and everything is completely uprooted. It's not the feeling of change that's bothersome, but just how ungradual and underdeveloped it is. Sometimes we don't get to see huge alterations in the world and characters that would take a long time to develop. A magic wand is waved and they're just different now. Sometimes these time skips don't seem to add anything except punching down at Mark unfairly to make it more miserable than necessary, and it happens so often it becomes redundant. I think the show could once again take advantage of the gaps between seasons and use those as spaces in the story instead of these numerous on-screen time leaps. Instead of Mark being trapped in a paper bag for five months and then coming out to find out his grandma has moved into their house with her two Siberian tigers off-screen or whatever, just have that happen between seasons and then catch us up without Mark getting stuck like a doofus four or five times. Yes, an occasional fish out of water main character is fine, and that'll give exposition for us as the audience, but we don't need our main character constantly running around asking everyone what happened while he was on a business trip to hang out with Spider-Man. He can be present for some of these things, man! But hey, that might not be something really to consider until like season four or whatever, I'm thinking too far ahead. I am so happy this show exists so it can serve as the ultimate example of what I've always wanted from comic adaptations. Just follow the story exactly as it is in a long-term format and make it better by strengthening the pillars of that story and ignoring its weaker points. And I love that it's an animated superhero show for adults. We haven't had anything like this since Spawn. I like to think that cartoon is somehow canon to this one. It just takes place 20 years ago before Mark was even born. Cause like, there's some overlap. Having hour-long episodes gives it this weight and maturity because you know they want to really dive deep and develop concepts instead of just doing something quick and light like a Villain of the Week show. The only other superhero cartoon I can think of with an episode runtime like this was Justice League, but for the sake of fitting on network television all those were split up into two-parters and aired a week apart. Thank god we live in the future! Being animated is definitely a plus because there's no doubt about whether an effects heavy costume or character design, major storyline or action set piece would be cut because it would be unfilmable on a television budget. These fight scenes simply couldn't exist in live action without being expensive as all hell and at that point it probably wouldn't even be a TV show. I know there's a live action adaptation of Invincible in the works, a movie, but I'm happy with just this. I don't need a single thing else. I know the movie will have to cut out side characters, heavily condense the plot, and leave out major swaths of world building because it's handcuffed to a two hour running time. Nah man, let all this breathe! Let us live in this world and with these characters for longer. The small human moments we get are what make them special. Not just the spectacle of the action. Everything with Mark just being a normal and relatable guy, and all of his internal struggles with the morality and existential dread of his life are exactly the first things they'd cut to make a movie on this scale work. But that's the stuff that makes the story good! What really makes Amazon's Invincible special is that it preserves that image comic seal. Under the image banner, comics are all owned by their creators. The story goes how they want it to go, they do with it as they please. The comic ends when they want it to, and they don't have to share their characters with anyone they don't want to. That still applies even with the show because both of Invincible's co-creators are directly involved with making it. Robert Kirkman wrote the pilot and the finale for the first season, and Cory Walker is doing all of the show's character designs. There is no doubt about it here, 
The characters talk how they talk and look how they look. It's perfectly authentic. Kirkman's characters are still his own to control, and maybe they don't resemble Walker's earliest art, but if you look at his more recent stuff, it's definitely just the show's art style and sequential art form. The fact that both of these co-creators are directly working on the show really legitimizes it as still being a creator-owned story, just with a much bigger team and a new set of tools to work with. I think that's incredibly valuable, and more comic writers and artists would probably love to have that level of say in how their work is being presented in another format. This should be the standard, especially after hearing stories of other comic creators being screwed out of royalties for their ideas being used in movies and shows on the Marvel and DC front. Sometimes they aren't even credited properly. Invincible sets a whole new precedence for comic book to TV adaptations in so many ways, and going forward, it can be the standard of what I look for in these sorts of projects. What do I want them to do with Spider-Man? Just this, just tell the story, but smoother pacing and a few extraneous or silly ideas left out, a great voice cast, and don't be afraid to let things get a little mature. Having a long-running animated show allows for the best development, and you never have to worry if an idea is skirting the line of being unfilmable. If you haven't seen Invincible already, it's absolutely worth your time. It's a show that excels by playing with your expectations, making you think about heavy philosophical questions, and by letting us really get to know some amazingly written characters, and then exploding some of their heads and disemboweling them. I know it's going to feel like an eternity, but I'll welcome it back with open arms when it's time for season two. This show has the potential to be...